Hey there guys, this is Cole. Welcome back to another YouTube video. Uh, sorry I haven't posted any videos in a few days. I've just been busy and all that. And uh, welcome back to another edition of Cancelled Movies. And today's Cancelled Movie I'm going to be talking about is the John, uh, is the, uh, the John DeBont uh, version of Godzilla. Or, or, or in simple terms the canceled American Godzilla movie from the 1990s that would have been directed by John DeBond. So, uh, so, so in 1998, Roland Emmerich directed the Godzilla movie or the 1998 Godzilla movie, which was the American version of Godzilla. And when it came out, the movie, it was destroyed by critics and audiences. A lot of people did not like it, especially Japan. People in Japan absolutely hated the 1998 American Godzilla movie. But believe it or not, that's not the version. That is not the version we were originally supposed to get. We were supposed to get a version that would have been much more faithful to the Japanese movies. And today I'm here to talk about that canceled movie. But first, let's talk about us uh, how far the production goes and stuff like that. So, in 1992, Sony sold Godzilla to TriStar, and it would have been, and, and to say the least, uh, it would have been very different to Godzilla 1998, which was the movie that was received. And it was much closer to the spirit of the original Godzilla Japanese movies as a destructive force of nature fighting other monsters. Ted Elliott and Sam Ruscio were hired uh, as screenwriters and, St and Stan Winston, out of all people, was going to design the special effects on Godzilla. Now, if you're not familiar with Stan Winston, he's a special effects artist, uh, he designed he de he designed the Predator in the 1987 Arnold Schwarzenegger movie Predator. He also designed uh, the special effects on the Terminator. Stan Winston. He also designed the T Rex in the original Jurassic Park movie. I mean, he worked on so many practical effects on movies, especially in the 1980s and 90s. And John DeBont who directed Speed in 1994 which was a critically acclaimed which Speed was a critically acclaimed action movie starring Keanu Reeves John DeBont because of the success of that movie was hired as uh, as director on this canceled movie and and after this movie was canceled John DeBont got to direct Twister which is a great movie about a tornado with uh Bill Paxton and Helen Hunt. In fact, I actually did a review of that movie uh, not too long ago, actually. So if you want to know my thoughts on Twister, directed by John DeBont, uh, just check out my review. But so anyways, John DeBont, he was a massive Godzilla fan. In fact, he had all the Japanese Godzilla movies on VHS tape. And because of the success of his uh, critically acclaimed action movie Speed, he was hired as director for the movie, and the screen and the screenplay itself was uh, was completed on December 9th of 1994. As for the plot itself, the plot, like I said, the plot was going to be very different from Godzilla in 1998. But so, so you might ask how. What was the plot and how different was it from the 1998 Godzilla? Well, so here's the plot. The movie starts off in the icy waters of the Arctic. A salvage ship is recovering reactor cores abandoned there by the Soviet Union during the Cold War. A malfunction causes an explosion which destroys the ship and opens up a cavern in the icy floor and from it, a liquid that appears to be blood streams into the water. Following this, we are introduced to our lead character, Jill, a biochemist who is called in to investigate the incident alongside her husband, Keith, uh, leaving their daughter, Tina, at home while they're away. Upon further examination, the mystery liquid ends up being amno amniotic fluid, Keith, alongside a group of scientists, heads into the caverns, which the liquid spewed and, and discovered a gigantic reptilian monster. 
the disturbance wakes up the creature from its hibernation and in a and inadvertently crushes the team beneath its feet killing Keith and Jill can only watch in horror the newly awakened creature crashes out the earth and attacks a Japanese fishing village on Takaki Island during a hurricane before plunging into the ocean depths. And then we cut to a scene 12 years later where Erevant, a best selling or Erevant, uh, a best selling author, and his assistant Marty sneak into a mental hospital to interview the only surviving fisherman who calls the monster, of course, Godzilla, as the title suggests. Aaron and Marty are then caught by the police and arrested. Before approaching by Pike, a national security agent who recruits them from the St. George Project, a team dedicated to hunting Godzilla, the team is led by Jill, who is hell-bent on killing the monster to avenge the death on her, on her husband, Keith. And while this happens, a meteor crashes into Lake Apaka in Utah in the water. The meteorites form, uh, the meteorites, uh, form begins to shift and change and begins to flow through the sediment like a mass of lit of liquid meant a uh, liquid metal beneath the lake it finds an underground cave polluted by a colony of bats the strange alien material proceeds to absorb to absorb the animals twisting and morphing their flesh into a new form a large disgusting creature with a 12 foot wingspan called a probe bat after absorbing the whole colony Many of these monsters fly out of the cave and proceed to assimilate whatever organisms it can come across to add to its gene pool over in San Francisco. And, and basically over in San Francisco, Godzilla is spotted heading towards the city. So the Navy are, uh, so the Navy are to counter any potential assault the USS Madison and the USS Lafayette engage in combat the madison surfaces bursting from the water though i i probably butchered this but the lafati is between godzilla and the surface as he swims past he almost nonchalantly reaches out his massive claws tears the the lafati's hull open as the claws rip through the hull water spilling in the crews scramble from emergency exits Godzilla's services almost seem to regard the havoc. He's caused with pride. He breathes fire, a ton of flame, nearly white, stabs out the capsized destroyer, hitting its midship. The hull's melts the explosion is spectacular. His path clear, Godzilla continues on his way, leaving behind the battle group. The Navy forces are, complete, are completely obliterated by Godzilla. In an act of uh, desperation, they even discussed the use of nuclear weapons, but the tactic is thrown aside by Vort as they believe it won't be affected by radiation and that the creature is something of a biological nuclear reactor. They corner Godzilla and utilize the same atomic fluid found in the art. Am amniotic fluid found in the Arctic to tranquilize the creature, and he collapses by the Golden Gate Bridge before being taken away by a military base in Massachusetts and contained in a holding tank filled with the fluid. Tina comes to the realization that her mother has spent the last 12 years tracking down Godzilla in order to kill it and protest the monster and protests that the monster isn't evil and is simply a force of nature. Jill refuses to listen to her daughter and sends her away to stay with her aunt in New York until their work is over. In, meanwhile, in Kentucky, the probats continue to absorb animals, bringing their bodies back to the cave to grow into the ultimate monster. Once it achieves its definitive form, it emerges from the ground 
as the griffin, a horrifying monster with the body of a puma and the huge wings of a bat and a hydra headed ton of snakes, the monster spreads its wings and flies towards New York City. Godzilla senses his enemies awakening and breaks out of his containment facility and dives into the Atlantic to face off against the griffin. Jill is told Godzilla is heading towards New York City and she makes her way towards the city to save Tina in the midst of an evacuation. The two monsters uh, clash in New York City and their fight lays ways to the surrounding city. The griffin has the advantage of flight, but Godzilla pulls at its legs and bites down. But the griffin uses memento, mem yeah, momentum, uh, I probably butchered it, but whatever, to thrash Godzilla around and pushes him into some buildings. Aaron realizes that Godzilla still has a restraining device filled with the amniotic fluid attached to his neck. So they destroy it, which gives Godzilla the ability to use his flame breath. He fires the head on, and the monster screams aloud as it crashes towards the East River. Godzilla proceeds to rip into the griffin, biting its wings and tearing into its flesh. He attempts to drown the invader, but the griffin thrashes swipes at Godzilla's eye and finds the momentum to escape from his grasp. The griffin hurtles towards Earth, claws bared, its speed its speed peeling its lip ba lips back in a vicious snarl. Godzilla waits. The griffin is nearly on Godzilla, screaming towards him. Godzilla leaps forward, suddenly exposing the three rows of jagged dorsal fins across his back. The griffin is ripped open from uh, steam to stern, and both monsters crash into the river. A huge impact wave races in both directions down the East River, flooding streets on either shore. Godzilla levels his fingers into the griffin's ribcage, pulls its body apart in a vicious crack. Godzilla slams the gr Godzilla slams the griffin back into the river. He strikes like a snake, teeth glistening, jaws shut beneath the water. Godzilla tears the head off the griffin, holds it up, and stares at it. Its eyes are closed and not moving. Then the eyes snap open and the body erupts from the water, clawing blindly at Godzilla. Even as it tries to repair itself, Godzilla then breathes a stream of fire into the body like being microwaved. The body ignites from inside and explodes, hanging from Godzilla's hand. The head snarls and bites. Godzilla gives it an almost exasperated look and spikes it on one of the jagged remains of the five towers of the Brooklyn Bridge. The head stops snapping, weird blue eyes stare uh, sparkly. Godzilla leans closely to it. It stares back. It is dead. Godzilla roars. And then we get to the part of the, uh, the end of the movie where Godzilla proceeds to return to the sea, but Air Force jets begin to attack Godzilla, but Jill calls them off as she finally comes to terms with the passing of Keith and forgives Godzilla. So, so you might ask, with a script this ambitious and the studio and the studio itself actually liking the script and considering it to be a good idea for an American Godzilla movie, why did this particular version get canceled and then instead we got the 1998 movie by Roland Emmerich? Well, the main reason this movie was canceled was because of the budget. And the movie director, John DeBont, he requested a budget of up to $140 million, which for the 1990s was an insane amount of money at the time. But try to, but, you know... $140 million for the 1990s was a lot of money, but TriStar, basically TriStar saw that as a risk, and TriStar insisted on getting the getting the budget lowered down to $80 million. 
John DeBont managed to get it down to $100 million, which was still high for that period. Despite the reduced budget, Studio saw the project still saw the project as a risk as they had little faith a Godzilla film could be successful outside of Japan. So they couldn't come to terms with an agreement and John DeBont was forced out of the production on December 26th of 1994. And then because of the success of Independence Day, Roland Emmerich was hired as director for Godzilla 1998 which was a completely different script from what the original version was because after this version of the movie was canceled, there were several script rewrites by Sam Elliott and and uh, Ted Ruscio. And then the final script they turned in is what we got with the 1998 Godzilla movie directed by Roland Emmerich, which was not a good movie and it wasn't a well-received movie by critics either, so... But man, after reading that script, I really wish we could have gotten to see John DeBond's version of Godzilla because Roland Emmerich is not a fan of Godzilla, which is why the one of the reasons why the movie was not good. But John DeBond himself was a fan of Godzilla, and it was much more faithful to the Japanese movies. So I think we would have gotten a much better. I think if this movie had actually gotten made, it would have been much better than what we initially received. So yeah, uh, that's my thoughts. Uh, that's pretty much the whole script of the canceled movie, and I just gave my thoughts on it. Uh, what do you guys think of this script? Uh, are you perf Are you one of the few people who like the 1998 American Godzilla movie, and you think this is the best route they went? Or are you like me and you wish that they would have gone this original script route? Uh, comment down below and let me know and I'll see you guys later. See you.